It's important to recognize the flaws in your work and try to improve them. So this week I'm going to talk about how my XPS dungeon tiles are so damn light and they always slide around. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This week, I'm not going to be building anything. It's a crazy holiday weekend, work Christmas party, kids birthday party, and general holiday planning, so I don't have time to build anything. I wanted to take this opportunity to touch on a subject or a question really that comes up quite often. Today I saw that question asked again on the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group and I thought, you know what, it's time I finally address this in a video. XPS foam dungeon tiles. They look great, they're easy to make, but damn do they slide around and move easily because they're really slippery and really light. And that can be a big problem at your table, especially if you have an elaborate setup and a rambunctious group of players who bump stuff and by the end of the night it could be a huge mess. Now me personally, the way I've improved this flaw is with my game table itself. The actual playable area is lined with felt and that felt surface actually adds just enough friction to keep the tiles in place quite a bit better. This by no means makes them perfect, but it does improve them enough that they don't slide around super easily when in play. The real advantage to this method is the fact that there is nothing on the tile itself, nothing adding thickness. Now, this may not be a problem for you, but for me personally, I like my tiles to be able to stack and be used to create different things. Anything that adds a thickness to the tile, throws off that look. I don't want to see felt on the bottom of my tiles when they're sandwiching together. If you don't care about that and you just want your tiles to act as tiles, you can take this one step further and put felt on the bottom side of your tile and on your gaming surface and that will create a lot of friction that will stop them from moving around quite a bit. Now on that same note, if you don't care about adding some sort of thickness or another layer to your tile, there's a few more options. One thing you can do is buy some of that cheap kitchen drawer liner, that kind of rubbery mesh stuff that you're supposed to put in your kitchen drawer to keep utensils in place and glue that to the bottom of your tiles. That'll make them really sticky and resist moving around, but it will add some thickness. The other thing you can do is put little rubber feet on your tiles. You can pick these up at the hardware store. They're meant to act as bumpers on cabinet doors or on the bottom of furniture. Those will add a nice amount of friction, stopping the tiles from moving around quite as easily, but they are going to add some thickness. If you're like me and you don't wanna add any thickness to your tile, what you can do is create little rubber feet using a glue gun. So what you wanna do is create rubber feet that are as thin as possible. And you can accomplish this by taking your glue gun and doing four dabs of glue on the corner. Nice hefty size puddles. But the trick here is that before that glue has cooled off, you want to flatten it out as thin as possible. You accomplish that by putting down some baking paper or wax paper, parchment paper, whatever you want to call it on your work desk. Simply flip it over and push it down onto that parchment paper nice and flat. This will squish the glue, creating a very thin, flat, rubber foot. Now be careful here, don't pull the tile off the parchment paper too quickly or you will have a mess on your hands. This glue will take longer to cool down than you probably expect because of the insulating properties of the insulation foam. So after a few minutes, you'll be able to pull it off and you'll have a tile with these really thin rubber feet. Now this won't completely solve the problem, but it will drastically improve it. And if you're playing just on a kitchen table, it will really help. If you have a felt playing area, the problem is kind of half solved and this will just improve it a little bit more. One thing that this doesn't solve is still the issue of weight. They're still very light, so they can still be bumped pretty easily. One way you can add some weight to the tiles without adding thickness again, is to take some appropriately sized screws and drive them into the bottom of the foam countersinking them in so that they don't project past the bottom. Adding four extra screws will add a nice little bit of extra weight combined with the glue gun feet and a felt surface. You're gonna have tiles that are overall 
pretty darn good in terms of moving around. Hey, if you have crazy rambunctious players that knock everything over, you're playing with kids, this is still probably not quite enough, but it will help. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna be jumping on the comment section telling me your ideas for securing your foam tiles, and I'd love to hear them. There's a few different concepts that I've been thinking about that I think would work really great, but I haven't done them myself yet. One is magnets. If you get some really small magnets, you could actually embed them in the sides of the tiles before paint and make your magnets lock together, which would be really nice. Another idea I had was to actually put thin kind of magnet sheets on the bottom of these tiles and create a gaming surface that's actually magnetic. There's two ways you could do this. One is that instead of having a wood or felt lined tabletop, actually using a sheet of steel so that it's metal and you have a magnet on the bottom of your tile and that would lock it in place really well. I've also considered using magnetic paint in place of the felt. So I do have this kind of crazy idea of redoing the playing surface of my table and it's gonna involve magnetic paint and also dry erase paint and magnetic tile so that maybe I could have a magnetic tile surface that I could also dry erase on. But that's a bit of a big undertaking and I don't really have the time to do it and I don't really have the need. This is still working for me right now. You never know, this table might get redone at some point. So those are my basic suggestions for dealing with the problem of light tiles moving around on your table. Let me know what your solution is in the comments below. I'm open to other ideas and maybe there's gonna be a eureka awesome moment in there that I don't know about. So I hope you found this video useful guys and if you did hit that like button, of course hit subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. But if you are a subscriber and you wanna start seeing more content from Black Magic Craft in your subscription feed, YouTube has just rolled out a new community feature for certain channels where I can post things like polls and questionnaires and link to other videos. But in order to make sure you're seeing that content, you gotta hit the little bell icon on the page. If you need to pick up any of the tools or supplies that I use in my builds, maybe a new glue guns, cause you're gonna be putting a million little glue gun feet on your tiles, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you will find my essential equipment store with links to all of the tools and supplies that I recommend and use myself on Amazon. Purchasing through those links gives the channel a small commission that helps fund these videos. Also, if you really wanna help fund these videos and help me continue to improve them and make sure they stay regular, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds are the main reason that I'm able to make a video every week and keep my equipment going when it breaks and all that other good stuff. Supporting me there also allows you to join the Black Magic Craft Fellowship, which is a nice little community of like-minded builders building cool stuff for their D&D games. It is the best place that you can directly get help from me on your projects. It is also the place where you can suggest ideas for videos and actually might make that happen. And that's it for this week, guys. I'm sure you're all very busy with various holiday things. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. I will see you again next week. Cheers.